listen to this thing purr. This is the new Ioptron IAFS2. This is Ioptron's new inline automatic focuser. The 2 means that it's a 2 inch focuser. There are, there's also an IAFS3, which means that it's a 3 inch focuser. This is a very unique product, and it essentially replaces the focuser on your current telescope. So if you have a rack and pinion or a Crayford focuser like this, if you wanted to install an electronic focuser, you need to install a bracket at the bottom, take out one of the coarse knobs here, and then install something on the side so that something stays attached on the side, which is a totally fine way of doing it. But what the IAFS does is that it becomes an inline focuser. So you can see that it doesn't have any knobs on the side. There's nothing to really attach to this. This is the focuser. This is the electronic focuser. And it's really, really cool. And I want to thank Ioptron for giving me the opportunity to test this out. I believe I'm the first person to get a chance to show this off, which, which is cool, you know, no big deal. I picked this up in early February, and the last time I was able to go outside an image was January 25th, of course. This video will be a first look at the focuser. We'll unbox it, we'll install it, we'll connect it to Nita and see how it looks, and I'll give you my thoughts on it. We'll also look at some of the specs. But as soon as I get the chance to, I'm going to do an in-depth video where I take this outside and actually image with it. And an additional thanks to Ioptron for lending me their RC8 telescope. It's an 8-inch Richie Cratian telescope. And the reason they lent it to me is because I don't currently own a telescope that would fit one of their available adapters. So they were kind enough to lend me a monster. And before we quickly look at what comes in the box and installing it on the RC8, let's take a look at the specs. So the IAFS2 costs $368 and the IAFS3 costs $448. The IFS2 weighs 783 grams or about 1.7 pounds, and the 3 weighs 1062 grams or about 2.34 pounds. These both have several telescope adapters that are available to them. The IFS2 has the M80, which will fit the 65 PHQ, the Ascar 65 PHQ, an M83.5, which will fit the C11, and an M90, which will fit the RC8 and RC6, and this is the one I'll be testing, and it costs $30. And the IFS3 has an M117 adapter, which will fit anything from the RC10 to the RC16. So these are giant telescopes, and these cost $48. There's also an additional camera adapter that you can buy. The IFS2 has the M48, which will fit most telescopes for $25. And the IFS3 has the M68 for $25. Payload capacity for the IFS2 is 5 kilograms, or about 11 pounds. And the IFS3 goes up 1 kilogram to 6 kilograms, or 13 pounds. They both have a travel distance of 30 millimeters, which is plenty of space. They both have USB-C connections, two of them, one on top and one in the back. We'll see exactly how these, those work. They're both compatible with the ASCOM and ND drivers, so lots of compatibility with pretty much any capture software. And the step resolution of both of these is 0.6 microns per step, which is incredibly precise. You can control both of these three different ways. So first is the software. So if you're using ASCOM or Indy, you can use something like Nina to control the focuser. There's also a manual focus wheel that we'll look at really soon, where you can turn it using your fingers and it'll go in and out manually, no electricity required. And finally, it has the onboard button, similar to the Ioptron IEAF that I reviewed last year, where you can just plug in a power bank, and there are two buttons there that you can go in and out of focus really easily without using any kind of computer. These come with a couple of included accessories, including two USB-C cables, as well as a 2-inch visual back adapter. So if you have a 2-inch diagonal, this would be perfect. Otherwise, if, you're if you have a focuser, that could probably come with a 2-inch to 1.25-inch adapter that you can use and plug in your 1.25-inch eyepieces. And finally, the way these are designed, there's supposed to be zero backlash. And for my testing, I didn't see any. And of course, I'll put that to the test when we test this out of the field later on. They both have built-in temperature sensors, which is really cool. And they also come with built-in camera angle rotator, which is just you can loosen a screw and you can rotate the body of the electronic focuser. And there are also position limiters on both of these so that you can never go too far in or too far out. The motors will stop to save it from any kind of damage. Let's quickly unbox the IFS2 and see what comes with it. So this would usually come with a two inch visual bag, but I received it separately since it's still a test item. But when you order yours, yours should be in the box. Inside we have the IFS2 body, it feels pretty good and solid. Then we have a couple of USB-C cables. And this one here came with the M48 camera adapter, but it will be an additional accessory that you have to purchase. So installing this is super easy. The first thing you should do is make sure you take off the focuser that's already there. In systems like the RC8 here, it's really easy. You just twist this off. 
Uh, that came off and you can see that this is a really nice Crayford focuser. It has both a coarse focuser and a fine focuser here. And you can see the numbers goes up to about 90 millimeters. So it just it goes pretty far, but it doesn't come out that all the way. I think it only comes out to about 50 millimeters, but still great focuser, but you want to make this even better. Now, usually these scopes will come with adapters for imaging. So this came with uh, 50 millimeter and two 25 millimeters. And I think I need two, what, 25 millimeter and a 50 millimeter. Maybe the other 25 millimeter as well. I'm screwing that in there. I'll figure that out later on. And then now we have our IAFS2, and this just screws on at the bottom here. And there's a screw here, a locking screw, so you can unhook this. You can loosen that. You can actually move the thread here, uh, independent of the actual focuser itself, so you can reposition it, make sure that it's in the orientation that you'd like. So that's pretty easy to do and close it up. All right, looking at this from the back, it has some threads here where you can actually include a two inch visual bag. This should come with the IAFS2. So it just screws on very easy. And it comes with the compression rings here so they don't scratch up your, your eyepieces and diagonals. If you don't have a two inch diagonal, uh, what you'd want to do is, you can kind of see it here, you take the two inch to quarter inch adapter out of your regular Crayford focuser that goes in right here. Make sure that goes in right there. And so now I can include a diagonal, a quarter, one and a quarter inch diagonal. I don't have a two inch diagonal. And on top, I can put in my Plossal eyepiece. And there we go. Let's zoom out a little bit. All right now, looking at it from the side, this is what the setup looks like if you were using it for visual. And the IAFS has manual control, so you can actually use this to make fine adjustments here, but it takes a really long time, and that's because it makes lets you do very fine focusing. I think that's gonna be great for like planetary if I can take this thing out before I have to return it. But what you can do is attach a power brick here, and then you can use the controls. So you don't even need a computer to control this, which is which is pretty neat. And now if you want to include a camera to this, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take the diagonal off. I'm going to take the one and a quarter inch to, or two inch to one and a quarter inch adapter off. Now I'll unscrew the visual back as well, the visual back that came with the IAFS. And you'll need one of these adapters. And this has M56 threads here. This is M56 to M48 adapter. So I'm just going to put this here and great. Now I have M48 threads here and pretty much any camera adapter that I have will go in here. For example, if I were to install my usual ZWO camera here, it has the M42 to M42 adapter and the M42 to M48 adapter. That just goes right here. And then my camera goes to the end here. And once this is all set up, looking at it from the side, this is what the imaging train would look like. We have the telescope here, the RC8. We have the extension tubes. We have the IAFS here. We have the camera adapter. We have our camera camera adapters here the, to get back focus. And then the camera itself. And it feels really nice and feels really sturdy. And of course you can include more accessories here such as a filter wheel or an OAG or a camera angle rotator and it'll all go here. The one thing I didn't mention is that it comes with two M4 threaded screws on both sides, one on that side and one on this side so that you can actually install additional accessories here. So if you have a mini PC or an ASI Air, you can mount it directly onto the focuser, decreasing the amount of cables that you may need. And I believe they're working on creating more adapters for other telescope sizes. So I'm hoping that they create one that'll fit one of my other telescopes, maybe my Astro 71F. So let's plug it into my mini PC and see how this works in Nina really quickly. All right, so I'm connected directly to my IFS and my mini PC here. And luckily it works with the same standalone focuser app that we installed back when I did the iOpton IEEF video uh, last summer. If I open that up, it'll automatically detect the focuser. And the only difference is that it's using version 1.04, where before we were using 1.03. So make sure you have the latest software and driver downloaded. I'll put the link in the description below. So right now, this is the position set to point to 18. And I know that it's actually at point zero. So if I actually go down one, you'll see that it's moving and it's not actually moving because that's, that's where it is. And one of the things I like about the Ioptron Focuser application is that I can set the current position to zero so that I'm always at zero when it's at home position. So 
that always that's always great. It has a temperature. It has a maximum step size of forty eight thousand. I think my default is like ten thousand or something. I put it to forty eight thousand because it's just over the maximum limit of forty seven thousand something. The nut steps by default is at a hundred, but you can change this to whatever value you'd like. So if I go up by a hundred, it's actually since each step is about 0.6 microns. So this is about 60 microns uh, when you multiply that by 100. So like every nudge increases it by 60 microns, which is incredibly small. So let's quickly test this with Nina. So I'm gonna close that, I'm gonna open up Nina. And I already have the RC8 profile set up here and I'm not connecting my camera or my mount. So this is only going to be testing the focuser since I'm inside, nothing else is going to happen go to the focuser tab here and you can see that it automatically selects the ioptron standalone focuser because that's the only one only focuser type i use and i can click on turn on and the application the focuser app will turn on automatically so i can just minimize that it gets all of the information from that app directly here so it has the max increment size the max step size and the position which is at 400 and i can manually move the position here let's say i want to change it to a thousand see that it went pretty quickly and it updated the position to 8,000. And these arrows here let me increase this by half the autofocus step size, which is 30. Uh, the full focus step size is 30 and half is going to be 15. And then this one is five times the step size. So that'll be 150. So if I click on this, I'm expecting to go to 1165. There we go. And you can control that value by going into options and then you go to autofocus and then the autofocus step size is here. And I do 30. Of course, when I take this out into the field for the first time and I test this out, I may have to change the autofocus step size. The backlash in and out, since I have not seen any kind of backlash with this, I will keep this at zero. Quickly going into the imaging tab here, I also have the focuser options here that I can move back and forth. I can change the target position to, let's say, 30,000. Click on move, and you can see it moving all the way. And then when I am ready to go outside in this window here, I would actually go into the autofocus option here. Wow, well, it's I'm at guider, I click on autofocus. And then here, once this is ready, I'll be able to click on start autofocus. Uh, since I don't have a mount and a camera connected, I actually can't do anything right now, but we'll test this out shortly. I really can't wait to use this outside. And at the beginning of the video, I did say this was a unique product and that's still true, but it does have one main competitor and that's the Prima Luce Asato. It's also an inline focuser, but it starts at $675. The two inch model has just a 15 millimeter of travel distance. It doesn't have a built-in temperature sensor, although you can buy an additional probe for it. And it has a higher power requirement. So if your computer doesn't provide enough power, you may need another 12 volt adapter, which you can increases the amount of cables coming out into or out of your system. Now, Prima Luce makes excellent products, and I'm sure that their focuser is no exception. But in a hobby where everything is just so expensive, being able to save $300 plus dollars is pretty significant. This focuser is currently available for pre-order at your normal telescope stores, such as Agena Astro and High Point Scientific. And if you're planning on ordering this focuser, I would appreciate it if you'd use one of the referral links in the description below. And I believe that this focuser will also be on display at NEEF this year. So if you're going in April, check out the Ioptron booth so you'll be able to see this in person. I'm also planning on going, so maybe I'll catch you there. If you have any questions about the IAFS, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. Please also check the description for an invite to our Discord server where we have a growing community of astronomers and astrophotographers where we get together and have astronomical conversations. Thank you for watching, stay tuned for the next video, and until next time, cheers guys.